Welcome back to my kitchen table. Um, clearly, I'm doing a tackle talk. Cats are getting excited. Ace is over there trying to beat the crap out of her scratching post. So, appreciate you bearing with me. Get ready for um, some interruptions. Are you done? All right. So, um, with this tackle talk, I was kind of preparing for it. I wanted to do like a spring one, like my best baits for the spring. And as I got to like laying out these baits and thinking about how I was going to do this and break it down and what baits I was going to use, it became very apparent that I needed to do at least two spring videos. I'm not going to guarantee you that there won't be a third one. Uh, but very clearly at least two being the pre-spawn and the post-spawn because in those windows, the muskies are vastly different animals. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure that there will be people who will disagree with my takes and, and what I've done. And again, I am far from an expert on what it means, uh, what, what uh, it means to be successful in the pre-spawn. I am not successful in the pre-spawn. I'll tell you that right now. I've caught like two muskies in the pre-spawn. I freaking suck at it. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to keep trying and I'm not going to keep banging my head against the wall. So anyway, without further ado, um, a lot of these baits are going to be smaller. So bear with me on that. I'm not saying you can't catch big muskies in the pre-spawn. I know a lot of people talk about muskies in the pre-spawn being like late fall muskies and you can use big baits and catch big fish with big baits. I get it. Um, all of the success that I've had in the pre-spawn has been on smaller profile baits. And a lot of the success that I've seen other people have uh, here in Iowa, in my home state where I can target them in the pre-spawn have been on small to medium sized baits as well. Again, that's not to say that you can't catch them on big stuff. Okay, enough rambling, I'm gonna get into it. Now, the biggest thing I think with pre-spawn that uh, you need to consider is that the water is cooler and those fish are gonna be moving a little bit more slowly, a little bit more lethargically. So you want something that's gonna incorporate a serious pause there or hang in the zone a little bit better. So these selections that I have, uh, first off, are, are going to do that. So uh, I'm just gonna dive in right away. Uh, the most quintessential springtime musky bait in the pre-spawn is the glider. This is a, a blunt nose from Chaos Tackle. Um, if you guys watch my videos, if you watch Brian's videos, you know that these things are insanely deadly, not only in the pre-spawn, but also the post. Uh, Brian got that 44 and a half dropping eggs in the boat, uh, clearly a pre-spawn fish. So the blunt nose, uh, is one that I like because it gets a little bit lower in the zone. It doesn't hang uh, super high in the water column. Now, that being said, if you have muskies that you have located that are super shallow, you might want to go for an option that, uh, you know, rides a little higher in the water column. But this one gets down there, and I really like that in the pre-spawn. So when you're targeting those steeper breaks, steeper edges, uh, you have no problem getting it down to that, getting it down to those fish. Okay, next one. Again, uh, sticking with the chaos theme, I'm gonna go with the, the eight inch Navin. Again, this lure can be super effective in, uh, in the post spawn as well, as evidenced by a lot of the videos that Brian has filmed. Incredibly, incredibly effective. Um, but that being said, you can adjust the weight on that guy and that's gonna be kind of the X factor. I know Bucko's got one coming out with the six inch and the eight inch that you can adjust the weight, but being able to adjust the weight and let it hang and suspend is pretty critical in that period when those fish are being lethargic, they don't really wanna move. Um, so uh, again, the hang time being key, I'm gonna move into the next thing related to hang time. So uh, I got some Lee lures here. Um, so I've got the six and a half and I got the five and a half. Okay, six and a half, really cool color. Um, all right, I'm gonna talk mostly about the five and a half, the death pause minnow. Now, uh, I spent some time last year banging my head against the wall with some Joe Booker baits, with some slammers trying to get them to suspend and weight them correctly and it just wasn't happening. And I was just, yeah. I should have just spent the extra money on the Lee lures that is guaranteed to suspend, that comes out of the box ready to suspend and not messed around with it. So uh, learn from my mistake, spend the extra money, 
and just get something that suspends if that's a profile, if that's something that you want. Again, um, if the Lee Lures is outside of your price point, I have an alternative option if you can find them. Oh, the Berkeley Juke. Now, these are suspending uh, kind of uh, twitch bait, crank bait, slash um, jerk bait. And they are really good for the pre spawn. They will just sit there. You can jerk them around and then they sit. Um, and they are an incredibly effective bait. Uh, Brian had one come up on his hotter than a rocket. I don't know. It, it, it ate, but it didn't quite get it good enough. Uh, I know that Corey down south, when he used to guide, had a lot of luck on these jukes. So uh, I, I believe even getting a fish well over 50. I want to say 53 he got on one of these. But they've got a really good rattling action. They'll call fish in from a long ways. If the water is clear, they've got a good little... Uh, you know translucent vibe that they'll put out. I need to throw more than I do um, Probably couldn't hurt to upgrade the hooks and the splits on these but then again, you're throwing off the weighting so yeah, anyway Another option for suspending jerk baits in the pre-spawn um, if the Lee lures are potentially out of your budget or If you are looking for a rattle Okay, speaking of rattles Another one for the pre-spawn, the JBO or Lungeon, um, the Rattle and Shad. Apparently I upgraded the hooks on this guy. I was wondering why it felt so sticky when I grabbed it. Uh, this is one of the other baits that I've had some luck on in the pre-spawn. And in fact, this one in particular, lost a muskie on it. I don't know what happened, it just came off. Sometimes it happens. Um, but uh, yeah, the Rattle Trap can be really good. I don't know if people listen to uh, I want to say it was the Backlash podcast. Tony Grant was talking about it. Um, and he has a lot of success up to, I believe, 51 or 52 degrees, he said. And then pretty much after that point in time, he puts the rattle traps away and then doesn't get them out until next spring. So I found that little tidbit very useful, being that I know that they work down here in Iowa, but I haven't quite dialed in the program as of yet. Okay, another one that I plan on going to in the pre-spawn um, this is brand new this year. This is like the TNA uh, Wagon Dragon um, Micro. And when I saw this initially featured on today's Angler's videos, I, I thought of it in this application. I was like, I need to get one of these for the pre-spawn. Um, I also need to probably upgrade that hook. I am kind of a, a hook particular person. So I'll probably end up putting an owner on that guy uh, that has less of a chance of getting bent out than this bronze must add. Anyway, neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, I saw these initially on today's Angler's videos and I was like, I gotta have one of those for the pre-spawn. Um, Chatterbaits are insanely effective for not only bass in the pre-spawn, uh, but I know a lot of bass guys catch muskies on them in the pre-spawn. So my thought of just a slightly oversized, but not over the top chatterbait, I figure it could be really good, especially for some of those shallow weeds and some of those shallow flats that those muskies tend to congregate in and on uh, during that time of year. Uh, last but not least, and I'll probably feature this one in my uh, post-spawn video too. So this is the Chaos, uh, this is the Mini Dusa. So I had a lot of luck. This one's been chewed a bunch. This is this is the battle beast from last spring. Again, hard to beat this color, especially in the springtime down here with the, the crappie spawn, panfish everywhere. I mean, just a small profile. Um, and, and then always you can weight it if you want. This one's not weighted, but if you chose to do so, you could do it uh, to get down to those fish a little bit more. Or if they tend to be staged a little shallower, you can just like rip it over the, the shallow stuff. So. Uh, again, that, that is just kind of my thoughts and selection for the pre-spawn. I'm not saying that I'm going to be stuck uh, throwing those baits or that any of that is set in stone, but that was kind of where I was uh, more or less uh, going to start my season in the pre-spawn. It's right around the corner. We're almost there. So um, I hope that all of you have a wonderful 2023 season. Uh, I am going to try and replicate my success from the last season. And if I can't, it won't be for lack of trying. 
Um, as always, I appreciate all of you watching. If you would, or if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. Um, the channel's been growing. I pretty much doubled my viewership, my viewer base uh, since this time last year. It feels really good. Um, those of you who tune in like every Saturday, uh, I see you. I know that there are like literally between two and 400 people that will watch my stuff as soon as it pops up on YouTube. So uh, I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate that support. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Good luck in 23.